Hello, everyone. Great was the old one, and terrible was his wrath. He consumed hope and begat despair. He inhaled courage and breathed fear. That's the kind of testimonial that really sticks out. The true subject of that rather grandiose statement is the old god Yashiraj. You may be wondering, what is an old god and why does that name sound oh so sexy? That story, it takes us back in time, to the beginning. In a time before the reign of Dragos and Azeroth. Eons before the age of mortal races that would later call it home. A planet had formed around a slumbering world soul in a far corner of the great dark beyond. World souls are a pretty big deal, as when they awaken, they become titans. Titans are an even bigger deal, because these are huge primordial beings imbued with the raw power of creation itself. They roam the cosmos, doing whatever it is that titans do bring order to the universe, seeking to waken others of their kind, who still lay in their slumber, curled up in the shell of planets that had formed around them. On the other side of this domain of order, there resides the Void Lords. As the name suggests, these beings are huge masses of shadow energy, cruel and merciless beyond comprehension, and with an insatiable hunger to seek and devour all matter within the physical universe. They were envious of the powers wielded by the titans, so the Void Lords sought to corrupt a slumbering world soul, since corrupting a fully grown titan that proved to be impossible. This corrupted titan it would allow them to fulfill their dreams, consume it all, and so into the great dark beyond, which is a term used for Warcross space, the unexplored cosmos that is still out there, they sought out these slumbering world souls. Not an easy task, as like the titans, the Void Lords had no idea where to look especially when they were neatly packaged inside of millions of planets. The Void Lords had nothing but envy and malice, and so they decided that creating dark creatures to do the work for them, and then flinging said creatures wildly into the cosmos, hoping that they would land on a planet harboring a world soul, that that was the best choice. These dark creatures are what we call the Old Gods. Hurling through the great dark beyond, four of these eldritch horror-esque monstrosities landed on the unlucky world of Azeroth, there was Kafun, Yaxaran, Nazoth, and Yasheraj. These four mutants struck lucky, because not only was the planet that they landed on supporting a nascent world soul, it was cradling a world soul far mightier than any of the Pantheon of Titans had encountered before, rumored to be even stronger than their champion Sargeras. These hideous amalgamations of fleshy hatreds dug their tendrils deep into the earth, seeking out the very heart of the world soul. Their darkness spread across its surface, the birth of the Black Empire. Azeroth's elemental lords were enslaved, while the Akir, the Faceless Ones, and whatever dark powers emanated from the Old Gods, it spread further and further across the world. Azeroth wasn't doing too well, until the Old God party going on on the planet, it would be discovered by Agrimar, lieutenant of one of the members of the Titan Pantheon Sargeras. The Titan Pantheon, having been informed of the dire plight of a world soul, they arrived on Azeroth to push the Old Gods back and save not only the world, but also the Titan spirit inside. Now, all four of these pretty wicked creatures, they were vile and despicable, but the most powerful of them was Yasharaj. And when the Titans created guardians of Azrael from the very earth itself, Yasharaj was capable of preying upon the minds of these so-called Titan Forge guardians, drawing upon their fears and darkening their facts. It wasn't just Yasharaj's power that was formidable, however. His appearance was also pretty intimidating. Yasharaj was immense in size and was also sometimes known as the Beast with Seven Heads or the Seven-Headed One. Now, none of the artwork that we have shows him having seven heads, but it does show us a snake-like scale body with a massive head, goat horns and seven yellow eyes glaring out above a dragon-like maw. The titans set their sights on the huge temple city built around the immense bulk of Yasharaj. They had it in their mind that destroying the huge stronghold, it would destroy the enemies in one swift stroke. The titans were mighty enough to just rip out the old gods and be done with it, but they were afraid that using their phenomenal cosmic powers, that it would deal too much damage to Azeroth itself. That's why they created these titan forged, and when the battle against Yasharaj played out, they feared that the old god would overwhelm their servants. Despite the better judgments, the titans knew that they had to take action. Amanful, 
High Father of the Pantheon reached down through Azra's skies and took hold of the writhing body of Yasharaj. With a giant heave of his arm, Yasharaj was ripped from the crust of the world. His gargantuan body ripped apart. His death cries shattered mountaintops and obliterated hundreds of the titan forge where they stood. It is also claimed that as his remains fell to the ground, Yasharaj's final dying breath manifested as the seven prime shahs, the shah of anger, hatred, violence, fear, doubt, despair, and pride. And that's where potentially that description of the beast with seven heads might have come from. Now, this was not the only consequence of evolving Yashiraj from the world, however. The old god's tendrils had worked way down far deeper than the High Father had ever expected. And ripping Yashiraj out of Azeroth, it caused an eternal wound on the planet's surface. Through this wound, volatile arcane energies, the lifeblood of the young world soul, erupted and roiled across the land. The titans, along with their titan keepers, they worked around the clock to seal the wound that Yashiraj had left behind, and it would eventually become known as the Well of Eternity. They knew that they could not risk tearing out the other old gods in the same way that they had torn out Yashiraj from the world, and instead they decided to imprison them. They also realized that Azeroth would need fortifying if it was ever to have a chance at waking up, and so they installed two machines to imbue the slumbering world soul with cosmic energies. The Forge of Wills was installed in an area known as the Storm Peaks, and Haiki Perra led an expedition to install the Forge of Origination within the South. As he traveled there, Ra came across the remnants of Yasharaj, those pieces that had fallen back to the land, the land that we now know as Pandaria. These pieces had corrupted the land around them. The largest remnant was the icy heart of Yasharaj, a mass of diseased flesh seething with void energies. Even in death, Yasharaj was proven to be a fierce opponent. Era decided to seal the heart away in an underground vault, which is called the Vault of Yasharaj. Haikipa Ra was wise to think that the remains of an old god would attract some attention, as Akir, they'd already been gathering near the prisons of the imprisoned masters, and they were also being attracted to the location of the heart. As a little bit of background information, the Akir, they're an insectoid race which had joined the old god's party on Azeroth having been formed from the organic matter seeping from the old god's monstrous bodies. The Akir in the north, they gathered around the underground prison of Yaxaron. They would become known as the Nerubians. The Akir in the southwest, they gathered around the prison of Kafun, became known as the Karaji, and the final group in the southeastern parts of the world. They gathered around the vile essence of Yasharaj, which still polluted the land, eventually becoming the Mantid. The Mentids had found themselves drawn to the valley around the vault, unaware that they were drawn to the lingering essence of the old god, and unaware that his heart was locked beneath the land. They launched an attack on the Mogul Guardians standing watch over the vault, but they were ultimately pushed back. Now the Cluxy, they did not consider this defeat as a failure. The surviving Mentid warriors, they had matured, they grow more powerful and cunning. The Cluxy patiently waited 100 years before assault to the Mogu again. They dispatched a new generation of young Mentids to besiege the Titan Forged. Once again, the survivors returned stronger, and thus began the Mentid cycle. Every century, a new Mentid clutch made war upon the Mogu. The ferocious battles, it removed the weak from the swarm, and only the strongest returns. With only a few cycles, Mentid civilization had become tightly honed and rigid, utterly focused on eradicating weakness and empowering the mightiest of their kinds. The Mogu marked the change with concern. They launched their own attack to eradicate this Mentid threat, and they might have even succeeded, was it not for one single Mentid, Korvan, who eviscerated the Mogu ranks and sent them into retreat. But the honored warrior was still not satisfied. He knew that it was only chance that he arose in his race's greatest hour of need, and he did not want to leave the mental defenses to chance alone. After years of experimentation, they eventually figured out a way to preserve these so-called paragons of their race, preserve them within ember, stored away to be released whenever the need was dire. You have earned this warning. If the old ones ever return, we mounted will once again stand by their side. We're going to fast forward a lot of years now to the time of Mr. Pandaria. 
This is a time where the Alliance and Horde rediscovered the land, bringing their war and their many emotions with them. The curse of Yasharaj, the Shah, that had become somewhat under control, since the Pandaren and the land, they learned to control their emotions, contain their enemy. Our arrival, it kicked up a storm, it fed the Shah, and it caused a whole bunch of trouble. Trouble, like the Empress of the Mentit, Grand Empress Jaxir, taken over by the Shah of Fear disrupting their ancient cycle and corrupting their race. We're able to join them in awakening the paragons in their hour of need. Learn more about this ancient race and even end up ending their queen. However, that doesn't make them our loyal allies. Then Warchief Garrosh. Yeah, these people search Pandaria for new troops, artifacts and power. Imagine everyone's surprise when they actually found a way to the vault of Yasharaj. Oh, thank the laws of physics you're here found something down there. Something huge! And all of a sudden the rocks started fighting back and everyone went crazy! It's bad business! Please, just make it all stop! Garrosh had sent a group of goblins, led by Grizzle Gearslip, to excavate the vault and see what lay inside. What the goblins discovered was something beyond the war chief's wildest dreams, the heart of Yasharaj. Grizzle was thrown aside by Hellscream's personal bodyguards, a giant oaf called Malkrok, who immediately claimed it for the warchief. Now Garrosh having any kind of artifact, that was bad news all around. But when it comes to Garrosh having the heart of Yasharash, well, that's bordering an apocalyptic. Mm, it thirsts. Bring it to the pools. You Pandaren try to bury your hate and your anger. But such power cannot be contained. It must be unleashed! A time will come when you will answer for your crimes. I answer to no one! wasted no time in reviving it by using the magical pools in the Veil of Eternal Blossoms. And then he took it into his inner sanctum within Orgrimmar's Underholds. Come, children of the Titans, you face the Paragons. As the Mentor promised us, they would always stand with the Old God. And this had quite a lot of people wonder why they were against the Shah taking over the Queen. Isn't the Shah just an extension from Yasharaj? But I guess to the it, they didn't recognize its curse as their true old god. The heart, empowered by the sacred waters of the Vale in the hands of Garrosh, that was a different story. That makes them allies to the war chief, meaning that they stand between us and confronting Hellscream ourselves. We take our former allies on and fight through the siege of Orgrimmar, where Garrosh awaits. Anger, hatred, fear. They are weapons of war, the tools of a war chief. Yes, yes, I can see it now. I can see the future of this world, a world ruled by the Horde, my Horde. The heart will be your end. You will rest in Nyalotha. Having tossed aside Gorhal, the weapon of his father and his clan, in favor of Zalatov, desecrated image of Gorhal, he and the old gods, they've had quite a bit of bonding time. Viewing visions of the future, handing out shiny new weapons, empowering the war chief, which made him quite a challenge to deal with. The true horde will come to pass. I have seen it. It has shown me. I have seen mountains of skulls and rivers of blood. And I will have my world! Nearing defeat, Garrosh will absorb all of the heart's power in a last ditch effort, dragging us into the vision of the future that he wants to make a reality. Behold! 
ruled my glorious destiny! <laughs> With Garish's defeat, the last powers of the heart ebbed away, leaving only a fading breath behind, which would also gradually decay into nothingness. Yasharash, the seven-headed beast, it was finally vanquished. The first old god to truly be dead and gone, by first being ripped out of the world by the titans, then its heart being locked away and then fully consumed. At least, that's what we thought back then. Later on in the interview, they have stated that old gods like Kafun and Yaxaron, they're apparently also gone, and with Battle for Azeroth, the final old god Nazoth has also been cleansed of the world. Old gods, however, they're powerful, capable of great and terrible things. So it might come as no surprise that Yasharash simply relocated, appearing in Hearthstone with the whispers of the Old God's expansion. The news post describing Yasharash's arrival within the game, it's joyfully chock-a-block with easter eggs from its Warcraft days, including a mention of his fury, of his remains being panda-handled by scruffy little mortals, and mentioning how his last terrible breath which you might remember spawned the seven prime shards within Warcraft, is capable of clearing whole continents. The Dark Moon Fair expansion, it also has in party heart as Yashiarash the Defiler. We can only wonder if the old gods will ever make a return in the story of Warcraft. We might have cleansed the planet of the old god infection, but there are more planets out there, potentially still infected. There's also still the Void Lords to consider, the source behind them, the ones that send these old gods out. They're still out there somewhere. And time is going to tell if and when they'll make an appearance. But for now, thank you very much for watching everyone. Really hope you enjoyed the story of Yasharash. Subscribe if you like my videos. Leave a like if you enjoyed this one. And until next time. See ya.